So today we're going to be taking a look at Bower. Bower is a package manager for front-end application. So where we have Node, which is for the back-end, Bower is for the front-end. So first off, we actually have to install it. And you just do npm install global. So we are going to install as a global dependency. And we're just going to paste this in here. Press enter. And there you go, it's installed. I already had it installed, that's why I did it really quick, but else it would install. And if you don't know what this command npm is, watch my npm tutorial. A lot of the stuff we're gonna be talking about today, you really have to have watched that tutorial or know npm, because Power is very similar to npm. It uses a lot of the same concepts, and also it's installed through npm. So really, you need to know npm before knowing Power. The first command we're gonna be taking a look at is the help command and that will give us some help. You can see it's gonna give us a whole lot of commands and a little short description of what they do. Also some different flags we can put on the, some of the commands. Now you can run Bower in two different configurations. You can run it where you save the packages in a bower.json file and where you don't. So I'm just gonna be showing you where we're gonna be using a bower.json because if that's sort of the whole concept of a package manager that you can pull packages easy down and you can also ship the packages really easily because you only have to include the bower.json file. Then on a new computer, you can just press power install and that will give you all of the dependencies of the application just like npm so the first thing we need to do is that i am in a folder here i have a main js file and a html file and this git prompt is opened in that directory and the first thing we need to do is to do power init and press enter Okay, so if you get the same error, it's a bug in Bower. It says register it to require interactive shell. Right before I started this video, it worked. So I don't really know what's up. So if this happens to you, you can just use CMD. And press enter, and that will get you the prompt. So the first parameter is the name. I'm going to be writing test in this case. The description, I'm not going to have one. The main file, that is the main file, so the main entry point, that would be our index.html. And we're not going to have any keyword. And the author, we can just write Vincent Lab. License is MIT, yes. Homepage, we're not going to have one. Set current install components as dependencies. I'm going to say no because we have not installed any packages yet. Do you want to add a common ignore file to ignore these things? Yeah, sure. Would you like to mark this package as private to prevent it from being accidentally published to the registry? Yes, this is going to be a private package. So I'm going to say yes on that. Now you're going to be getting the file here. And this is going to show you all of the things that it has automatically filled out. Yes, that looks great. Let me say yes to that. And you can see that we got this bower.json file. Now, if we open our project, you can see that it has a little nice icon. And we now have this bower file. By the way, the code that we have here is just pretty basic HTML. It has this h1 with an ID of time. We include the main JSON file, which just has this. And you can already see that we both need jQuery and moment.js. So that is what we're going to be installing. Now back in our folder and in our console here to install a package. It's really easy to just do power install or power I like in node. And then we just type the name. And if you get this error, well, then we have to switch back to the git here and that will actually run it. There you go. Now, why I'm getting all these errors, I have no idea. You can see that we got this power components. And if we go into our project, you can see that we got jQuery in here. Now, this is not going to work because we have to include it up here. So to see where the files that we have to include, you can actually run this command here, which is power list path. And that will just show you all of the paths that you have to include. And you can see that we then have to include this. We just added that up here. Now, if you want to see what packages that there is, you can actually just open the website here. Scroll up here, search for packages. You can just search for package here, but you can also see all of the packages. And the one we want is moment. And that will actually link you to their GitHub. So we're just going to be doing Bower I moment. Now you will see a little error that we have done for the last two packages and something we have to change. 
when we go in our power file, you can actually see that we, we don't have any dependencies. So it's really important when you install a package in power that you either do a big S and you can see that that added it as a dependency over here, or you do dash save and that will add it. So make sure to do those commands. If you're using the power file, you don't have to use the power file. You can just install the packages and don't worry about the power file. But I think it's really neat to have the power file because you can ship your packages and only share your code. And then everybody that gets the code can just do power I or power install and that will get all of the dependencies. Now we've installed all of our dependencies. Let's be sure to at the, the moment, right up here, be sure to initialize the components before your main JSON file. And let's take a look at the code. And you can see that we get the time. There's a few other commands I want to show you. The first one is that you, you can obviously type uninstall and that will uninstall. Let's take a look at our folder here. And if we take a look at here, you can see that when I press uninstall, it uninstalls jQuery. Now, if you take a look at the dependencies, you can see the dependency is still here because also when you uninstall, you have to do a big S and that will actually uninstall as a dependencies. So let's install that again and make sure to put the dash save there and that will now add it again. Now, if you want to see some information about a package, you can do power info and then the package name. And you can see that you get all of the versions. So this will be good for later because you can do a update command and then you get their power file. So this is all the available versions. You can also get these versions a different way. And that is by going on here, finding the package. So this is a package. We'll click on that and go to the releases. And you can see that all of the same releases are here. Now, why that is useful, why we need to get the versions, because you can update. So let's do power install jQuery. And instead of an at symbol, we'll do hash symbol and then the version. And this, by the way, works the exact same way as Node, also using semantic versioning. So if you don't know what semantic versioning is, watch my Node Package Manager video. I'll also leave a link below. And also remember to do dash S because else it won't actually change this modification to the power.json file. Now, before updating, let's just press uninstall. And then when we go in here, we can do power install and then we can do the jQuery, the version. And you can see that the version is now downgraded. And if we go in here, you can see that the version is now downgraded. There's also an update command. I can't currently get it to work, but the way I think it's supposed to work is that you do power update the package name and hash symbol and the version and then dash s to save it. And you can also do it without the version and that will just update it to the newest version. It follows semantic versioning. So like in node, it follows the symbol here in front. So if you watch my node packager manager video, it's the same structure of versioning, but something else which is pretty cool about power is that packages from their package store is actually not the only thing you can install using power. You can actually also install github repositories so if we just take a look at that you can see that this is actually the repository we want to download so this command is exactly the same as doing get clone by the way you can do the dash s and that will save it as a dependency so you can see in our power file you can actually see that we have tutorials and in our power underscore components folder, you can actually see that we have the tutorials and all the files from that tutorial is then in there. Now you can also pull direct files. So you have a file, it's just a JSON file. It could be any file, but it, it's a raw file and it doesn't have to be stored on GitHub. It could be stored anywhere. And by copying the URL and then doing browser install, there you go. And you, and you can add the dash S to save it. This will actually save that file and if we go in here you can actually see that this is actually added and it's called app and you can see the app folders right up here with the file 
So I think that was all that was to say about power. It's a bit buggy, I must say. You, you saw in the beginning with Hansel, it was a bit weird. And also the update command didn't really work. So I would say it's probably still a work in progress. It's not as solid as NPM, but you can certainly use it. It is really cool. And I'm definitely going to be using it in future projects. So I hope you learned something and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.